but the PhD I'm pursuing is quite a challenging uh, trajectory because I um, do it in the two years instead of four years. So there was quite a, quite a focus on producing a lot. And that's why I joined the PhD Accelerator. So it was basically in the name, uh, how to accelerate your, your project. So uh, the, the trajectory, the, the online courses really helped me to focus on what matters and uh, to get output in the form of conference papers uh, initially, uh, but also uh, to get into this systematic literature review uh, where the courses provide a very extensive approach and uh, very practical tools as well to, to actually plan the work and go into screening papers very fast, uh, getting uh, the, the right content out of it and uh, positioning your research in the, in, in the broader uh, context. Right, so um, Sebastian, you you joined exactly, I was, I was checking, and you joined almost exactly four months ago. W what have you written or submitted since then? So, uh, I joined uh, in January indeed, uh, so uh, four, four months ago, and um, I've uh, written uh, three conference papers and uh, conducted uh, my uh, systematic literature review, which I'm currently writing, and written and submitted an extensive uh, journal article. Mm -hmm. And all in all in four months. In four months, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty good. So let's 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 get into like how you how you achieve that and. You know, maybe we're going to start with where you were before joining PhD Accelerator and then uh, what challenges you had with writing those papers. And then um, maybe you can share some tips and strategies as well with with other PhD students um, that will help them write um, as well. And um, before maybe we do that, like I know your topic is related to AI, but can you just tell us a little bit more, like before we get into like specific strategies about your papers, like what specifically are you researching when it comes to AI? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm in the information systems research uh, discipline, which is on the uh, broad spectrum from uh, computer science to uh, the actual uh, design science and uh, the, the impact of, uh, of technologies in uh, societal environments. So it's quite a broad uh, approach uh, to AI, which I have. And in my PhD uh, project, I focus on uh, developing a design theory for uh, AI engineers or people who are involved in the, the development of AI applications how to come to a uh, human-centered approach. Brilliant. Um, it sounds like AI now, especially with, I think, chat GPT, like it's really come into, into prominence and like it's really all over the news, right? So it sounds like a very current topic. Yeah, it's a very current topic, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, chat GPT is all over the place uh, currently, so uh, dominating timelines. But uh, yeah, of course, AI is not uh, really new. So it's uh, like uh, from the 50s. And same, the same with the topic I'm working on, which uh, is uh, intelligence amplification. So how can we amplify our uh, uh, cognitive uh, abilities uh, using AI? And that also originates from the 50s. But nowadays with more modern computing and with uh, the, the information society, it's uh, more recent uh, and uh, actual than, than ever, I would say. Brilliant. Yeah, maybe maybe soon AI will be writing papers for, for us and we won't have to do any work. but. At this stage, you had to write the papers yourself. So maybe if we if we backtrack to you know four months ago, what, what were some of the some of the challenges that you were facing when it comes to you know writing those papers or your PhD overall? Yeah. So um, personally, I come from industry, so I have a, a, a different track than uh, colleagues of mine in the in the PhD room uh, who do more like the, the bachelor, master, PhD journey. So I had to switch uh, from ten years uh, working in the, the IT consultancy into uh, getting into academia. So I first did the engineering doctorate, which is more uh, application oriented, industrial uh, type of research. And now I'm into the uh, PhD uh, research, which is more uh, aimed at theory development, fundamental research. So that was for me um, the challenge to switch in mindset and uh, focus on uh, top journal publications. So when I started uh, my uh, engineering doctorate, um, I already uh, published uh, some workshop papers, some conference papers. Uh, so, so I was quite used to, to writing, but the PhD I'm pursuing is quite a challenging uh, trajectory 
because I um, do it in two years instead of four years. So there was quite uh, quite a focus on producing a lot. And that's why I joined the PhD Accelerator. So it was basically in the name, uh, how to accelerate your, your project. So um, the, the trajectory, the, the online courses really helped me to focus on what matters and uh, to get output in the form of conference papers uh, initially, uh, but also uh, to get into this systematic literature review uh, where the courses provide a very extensive approach and uh, very practical tools as well to, to actually plan the work and go into screening papers very fast, uh, getting uh, the, the right content out of it and uh, positioning your research in the, in, in the broader uh, context. And also offering concrete tools uh, for research paper writing which I leveraged a lot uh, for the three conference papers, but especially for the journal article. This was uh, really, uh, a really really uh, valuable resource uh, yeah, to have the high, highest qualitative output uh, possible. Absolutely. So what, what were, like coming from, from your background, from the industry, what, what were like some of the challenges when it comes to writing those research papers? Because you said you were used to writing um so what was what was still difficult or what what were you missing when it comes to you know publishing maybe in in those higher impact journals yeah for, for me the challenge was uh, mostly finding the right uh, tone of voice and uh, using uh, the right uh, sentences to to articulate uh, your scientific contribution and also when it comes to narrowing down uh, the the exact uh, research gap or knowledge gap uh, that you want to address how, how can you relate work of others uh, and position your research the novelty of it uh, those, those were things that uh, specifically uh, you know were on my development list hmm. got it yeah and you know when it comes to writing the the systematic review why why did you decide to to do a systematic review uh that's a that's a that's a good question um a lot a lot has been researched of course by in the ai field but um, when it comes to human-centered ai and specifically intelligence amplification i found out that uh, uh, there isn't a uh, very uh, actual uh, review study on, on on this topic and it's uh, evolving to a interdisciplinary topic so, mm -hmm. so we see a lot going on uh, from from neuroscience currently with uh, brain uh, computer interfacing uh, for example but also in the philosophy of science we see a lot on cognitive extension uh, about the ethics of course but also in the um, uh, human computer interaction field and with my systematic literature review i try to uh, get more a interdisciplinary view mm. on, on, on the topic mm. And it's, it was very interesting, maybe as well, I'll point it out for people listening, like how you answered that question, because like straight away, like in your answer, like why did you do that paper? The first thing that you said is you pointed out there is a research gap. And I think, yeah, that, that shows probably what you, you what you learned from the from the program. But also, yeah, that's that's the way to think about research papers, you know, like, well, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, because nobody else has done this specific thing. That's that's why I'm doing it. Or there are a lot of new developments in my field which nobody has synthesized so well i can i can come in and and do it exactly yeah and and you also mentioned that like you you enjoy the the sort of the, the how the process of doing the systematic review is laid out on 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 phd accelerator so what what did you learn from it like if you if you had to give like two or three key sort of takeaways from you for other people who are other PhD students who are maybe doing a systematic review, what, what for you were like the most maybe important lessons in that process? Having the actual time to to go into the reading. So uh, one, of, one of the main takeaways is that if you actually want to do a big systematic literature review, you need to focus on uh, reading and writing. Uh, so next to having like a concrete skeleton to organize your writing, uh, you also have uh, good tips on uh, how to divide your time, like uh, uh, initially three or four days uh, reading, uh, summarizing, uh, extracting uh, the right knowledge from the papers, and then uh, shifting your focus on to one, two, three days of writing. Uh, so how to balance your, your uh, calendar and uh, actually have uh, the search conducted and um, the review written provided a lot of helpful practical uh, support as well as very specific tips on the academic writing itself 
Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video. Mm. And you mentioned reading, and I think a lot of people struggle with, you know, kind of getting lost in that um, rabbit hole that, you know, they find one paper and then that paper has five more interesting references and they start reading those and then there is like, and it just spirals out of control and you never stop reading. So how did you, like, how did you know when you've read enough or how did you manage your time so that reading didn't just take over your whole life and you didn't spend like two years just reading papers uh, well in my case it helped uh, a lot that i'm uh, on a, on, a, on a fast track uh, pgds but i went uh, i went abroad uh, for 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 10 weeks to do uh, collaborative research in japan where i had uh, the the focus time but also uh, limited time so 10 weeks to uh, to do the research uh, that helped a lot to to plan it and also to limit it and in my uh, search protocol i also made stop so when uh, when do you have enough and uh, when do you stop iterating because some papers might might be cited a thousand times uh, uh, well if you have a few of those papers then you can easily fill your whole calendar for the for the rest of the year but yeah uh, there are also the course and the, the, the practical uh, guidance, uh, they, they, they really help you to, to uh, balance it and to come to, to a, set, a set of papers and especially uh, knowledge that will help you answer your research questions because I think that's, that's the most important thing if, if, if you can uh, answer your research questions uh, based, based, based on your SLR then uh, I think that's the, the main uh, takeaway that you're on the right track and it's never never complete so <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and I, I like that idea of like those stop rules that's like a sort of very engineering mindset if you if you will that like yeah if this happens then I do this or I yeah. stop in that case can you share like a stop rule like that maybe with with other people that that helped you I don't know if you had like a number of papers that you read that then you said like okay now I stop enough is enough or what what was that stop rule that you had uh well initially uh, I wanted uh, to to iterate until I didn't find any new papers but uh, my initial search uh, resulted into 152 papers which is actually already way too much for uh, uh, SLR so, so then I uh, uh, added the rule two levels deep and after two levels deep, I just uh, stopped adding uh, new references or uh, uh, cited uh, other papers. What do you mean with two levels deep? Just just to explain it as well to, to other people. Um, yeah, so when you do your initial search uh, queries uh, and uh, you, you extract uh, papers based on uh, in the exclusion criteria, you will have an initial sample. And based on uh, these, these 152 papers, I did two, uh, two rounds of iterations uh, to come up with additional papers. So if, for example, if you have a, high, a high, highly cited paper, uh, you go into that, read that and take the next one and after that you stop yeah i think i think that's a that's a brilliant rule really that can if if you stick to it because it can really help you to manage your time better and yeah it's it's important to have those sort of also maybe having limited time like what you mentioned happened to you in japan because i i find that the, the time it takes you to do work kind of expands proportionally to how much time you have so like if you assign yourself two hours to do an activity you're probably going to spend two hours on it but it's quite likely that probably if you had assigned 90 minutes to it you would have finished in 90 minutes you know we can be highly effective if we can keep ourselves within the boundaries and then train our brain and ourselves to that habit that like yeah i just have 90 minutes and i have to finish whatever i'm doing in those 90 minutes that's it there, there are no there is no more time for it because tomorrow i'm doing something else yeah yeah and perhaps like you know having that two-year time limit for the for the phd that that really helps as well right yeah exactly so uh that that puts you on to uh the, the the essence and mm -hmm. uh you don't have that much time uh practically speaking to uh have all these other all, all interesting avenues that you could explore yeah. yeah absolutely so 
now that you know you've written those three conference papers, you submitted uh, the research paper, you finished the systematic review, right? Which you're probably going to be submitting soon. So what's what's next? What what other papers do you have in the pipeline, and what else do you still need to finish? Uh, well, uh, as from now, I will focus on writing the PhD dissertation, mm -hmm. uh, and indeed uh, focus on uh, another journal article to publish the uh, the SLR, mm -hmm. uh, and with that, I can uh, qualify together with the PhD dissertation to uh, to go into the final stage towards mm -hmm. uh, defense. Mm -hmm. But I do have a paper uh, pipeline laid out, so that's also one of the, the takeaways of uh, frequent uh, pu publishing. Uh, means that you need to have like a constant yeah, pipeline in place to to, to work on uh, yeah, new ideas, uh, new concepts, uh, new new research questions. Uh, mm. How so did I you develop that pipeline? Because I think that's interesting for a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. yeah, people wonder yeah how. How do some PhD students or researchers maybe publish, I don't know, three, five papers every year? So how, how did you develop that pipeline of ideas? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, it's, it's something I uh, do, do based on research projects I work in. Uh, so there, there is a constant, uh, constant flow of new projects uh, initiating uh, a lot also with industry. So a lot of uh, workshop and conference papers I managed to get published uh, ba based on that uh, regard. But also having this, this long term vision, research topics you want to work on. And mm -hmm. by doing this SLR, you actually see where are the gaps. And based on these gaps, uh, it becomes way more easier to have like a position paper, to have a new idea positioned somewhere or uh, to go into uh, a new direction, uh, to, to explore use cases somewhere, do a mapping study. And from there on, start building yeah, small contributions, but also the larger, uh, such as the, the SLR. Mm -hmm. um, and when you actually have it going on and you are in the flow, then well, uh, for me, it was, it's quite easy to to, to get uh, uh, papers out. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant, love it. So it really looks like you're, uh, you know, you've got it all laid out and and set up for for the near future when it comes to publishing papers. Yeah, so uh, that that goes uh, goes all well. So now the the focus is on uh, completing uh, the PhD, and then I can start as an assistant professor at the university. So then uh, continue uh, to to expand the academic footprint. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I have no doubt. Out, you know that that you will achieve it bearing in mind you know what you've achieved in just four months then you will definitely finish the, the rest of the PhD and it's exciting to see as well that you already have more ideas for for future papers you know that will really put you in a nice place once you become an assistant professor that you can start developing these ideas with your future students as well yeah, yeah so that's uh, that's also the the, uh, the effect of the program so it, uh, it focuses on accelerating your PhD but also brings a lot of valuable uh, skills and uh, competencies that, that you can leverage uh, yeah, next to it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.